Hey, ready to continue with the interview questions? Here, could you share a bit about a challenging .NET project you worked on and how you approached solving any issues that came up? Sure. Uh, in .NET-based real-time chat application, we experienced high latency and scalability issues due to frequent database writes. To resolve this, I implement SignalR with the background queue processing system using Azure Service Bus. This reduced direct database writes, improved message delivery speeds, and allowed the applications to scale efficiently. And uh, one more. In a recent project I worked That's on... That's a great approach. Using SignalR with Azure Service Bus for background queue processing is an efficient way to reduce latency and improve scalability. By offloading frequent writes, you must have significantly enhanced performance. Now let's move forward. Let's start by category. First, we'll begin with ASP.NET. Let me know when you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Great, now let's continue. What is ASP.NET? Uh, ASP.NET is a web application framework developed by Microsoft for building dynamic web application and APIs. And uh, it's provide the MVC, uh, I mean to say the model view controller architecture, pager pages, web APIs, and many more uh, things. Good explanation. ASP.NET is indeed a powerful framework that supports different architectures like MVC, web forms, razor pages, and web APIs, making it flexible for various application needs. Now let's move to the next question. Explain the MVC architecture in ASP.NET. MVC stands for the model view controller. A model uh, represents the business logics and data handling. And the view represents to handling UI representations. And uh, in, in, uh, in a controller acts as a uh, intermediary between the model and the views. That's correct. MVC model view controller is a design pattern that separates concerns making applications more scalable, maintainable, and testable. Just to refine your explanation, model manages data and business logic. View handles the UI and user interactions. Controller processes user input, interacts with the model, and updates the view. Now, moving to the next question. What is middleware in ASP.NET Core? Uh, middleware are component. It's a class component, you can say. So that process HTTP request and response in a pipeline. You're on the right track. To refine it a bit, middleware in ASP.NET Core is a component that processes HTTP requests and responses in a pipeline. Middleware can be used for tasks like authentication, logging, exception handling, cores, and request modification before reaching the final endpoint. For example, in ASP.NET Core, middleware is configured in the program.cs or startup.cs file using methods like use middleware or built-in methods such as use routing, use authorization, etc. Would you like to go deeper into middleware types or implementation? No. What is dependency injection in ASP.NET Core? Dependency injection uh, is a design pattern that uh, promotes loosely coupling by injecting dependencies rather than hard coding them. That's correct. Dependency injection DI in ASP.NET Core helps in managing dependencies by providing objects through constructor injection, method injection, or property injection rather than creating them manually. ASP.NET Core has a built-in IOC in version of control container where you can register services in the program.cs file using add singleton, add scoped, or add transient. Now, let's move to the next question. How does routing work in ASP.NET Core? Mm, uh, routing determines how incoming request map to controller and actions. It can be uh, conventional routing or attribute routing on controller. Uh, on controller and actions. Exactly. Routing in ASP.NET Core defines how incoming HTTP requests are mapped to specific controllers and actions. Conventional routing, defined in program.cs using app.use endpoints, and follows a predefined pattern like 
You can see the code in our conversation history. Attribute routing uses attributes directly on controllers and actions for better flexibility, like you can see the code in our conversation history. Now, moving to the next question. What is the difference between view data, view bag, and temp data? Uh, view data is a dictionary object based or a required type casting available for same request. View bag is a dynamic object, no type casting required, available for the same request. So view, view bag and the view data uh, perform for the same request. But in, in case of temp data, stores data temporarily and survive one additional request, I mean to say that concurrent request. Great explanation. To summarize, view data, dictionary based view data key requires typecasting available only for the same request. View bag dynamic object view bag dot key, no need for typecasting, also available only for the same request. Temp data stores data temporarily between requests. Temp data key persists for one additional request unless read. Now, moving on to the next question What are tag helpers in ASP.NET Core? Tag helpers are server-side component that allow writing HTML element dynamically in Razor views, making Razor code more reliable and uh, maintainable. That's correct. Tag helpers in ASP.NET Core enable server-side processing of HTML elements, making Razor views more readable, maintainable, and dynamic. For example, the built-in ask for tag helper binds form elements to model properties. You can see the code in our conversation history. Tag helpers are more readable than traditional HTML helpers. HTML text box for M dot first name. Now let's move on to the next question. What is Kestrel in ASNet Core? Kestrel is a cross-platform web server. It's a lightweight web server, you can say. So used in ASP.NET Core application for handling HTTP requests. Absolutely. Kestrel is the default cross-platform, lightweight, and high-performance web server in ASP.NET Core. It handles HTTP requests and serves as the default web server for ASP.NET Core applications. It can be used standalone or behind a reverse proxy like IIS, NX, or Apache. It supports HTTPS, WebSockets, and HTTP2 for better performance. Now, moving to the next question, what is the difference between IHTP Context Accessor and HTTP Context? Uh, do you mean uh, I HTTP context accessor and HTTP context, right? Yes, I mean H context accessor and H context in ASP.NET Core. Okay. So, what is the difference between I HTTP context accessor and HTTP context? I HTTP context accessor is used to access HTTP context in server uh, in services where it is not available directly like uh, background services. Yes, you have successfully cleared the first round with an excellent score. Now let's move on to the second round. 